today's video is on the dark secrets in World of Tanks console. I think there's a lot of them uh, out there and these are kind of a video on basically some things that people don't really tell you when you start playing World of Tanks and I guess that they're kind of the negatives of playing I would say in terms of playing it for a long a long time. They're the problems that you'll face when you come up against uh, some of the higher tier vehicles and along the way I'm sure you'll find out that there's actually quite a few of these kind of OP mechanics within the game that lead to a little bit of um, just... They can be not fun for you to actually play within the game. I think that being on the other end of the vehicles that can kind of do that kind of thing to you is kind of the big problem I find within World of Tanks. And of course we're going to showcase some of the reasons um, that World of Tanks has these kind of problems. And I think that picking some of the vehicles, showing you what they're all about and showing you how I think that they're potentially overpowered or... Um, at least not balanced properly and just some of the things I just think that that's kind of a good way of showing some of the new players that have played the game what kind of damage some of these tanks can do and what they actually do to the game itself. Now first tank what are we actually playing in? Well this is the um, FE 4005 of course uh, the biggest gun in the game other than artillery of course uh, which I'm sure will get some uh, featured gameplay in just a second but yeah, this is a tank that has the ability to do 1450 alpha damage. Don't worry because, yes, that's a lot of damage. It's the highest damage you can do on any normal tank within the game with um, with its actual rounds. Yes, you have to penetrate and yes, they kind of act like HE rounds where if you don't pen, you still do damage anyway. And so I guess that that's a reason why they are quite good. Of course, you have to be wary though because the AP rounds could just do consistent damage against opponents rather than having to kind of have this um, damage which you're not entirely sure whether you're going to actually pen sometimes. But what it does do is, you know, I can pump a tier 10 heavy in a non-penetrating way where I don't have to aim and I can do 400 damage as you just saw to that T110E5. I think that's absolutely disgusting within the game. I don't have to have any skill for me to be able to do that. Yes, it does take 20 seconds for me to be able to do that. But the fact that I can literally not aim whatsoever, I can then swap my rounds, which will see me do here, and then pen someone with AP rounds when I know that I'm not going to penetrate with my Hesh rounds. And that's because we got the equipment buff that came with update 6.0 on World of Tanks console. So that's another reason why on console I just don't feel like some of the ways in which the tanks are balanced just aren't particularly balanced, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, I think that showcasing them, highlighting some of the aspects of some of the tanks might even show you how to actually play them as well. And of course, you know, going for some of these shots, uh, you know, you have to take them anyway, even if we are going to miss. But it is highlighting the kind of tanks that can be not necessarily overpowered in all situations, but in certain situations, these tanks just are not balanced whatsoever. It's like the whole balancing factor of the FV 4005 is that it gets absolutely zero armor now yes that that is a big weak point i guess in terms of everyone can pen you most people can pen you with he rounds if they actually fire them and aim for the weak point which is this massive turret and yes you are massive but when i can do what i'm doing now where i'm just hid behind a building yes i can poke out take one shot of damage and then pump them for 1000 damage consistently and that's kind of the problem I have with a lot of these tanks. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a massive problem, and it certainly means that, you know, for the majority of situations, you're probably not super overpowered, but it's those cases, and this is my point of this video, is that it's the ability for you that you can do this kind of damage. And I guess Wargaming have kind of fixed it with the FE 4005. No longer can you just one-shot everything that you meet. Yes, you can one-shot some tanks, but it does rely on you high-rolling a little bit. Um, which is kind of annoying, but then again, you know, at least you can one-shot people. That's more than any other tank in the game can do it consistently without getting an ammo rack. And there you go, 640 damage using my AP rounds, which have a ridiculous penetration where you're never going to bounce. And yeah, now we just wait for 13 seconds. No point in pushing around a corner when you're not reloaded in a tank that has no armor. And of course, this is what you can do. What are they going to do? They just have to wait until you're reloaded to be able to hit you back. And it's a case of with these tanks, all you have to do, pretend like, you know, you're either reloaded when you're not 
um, if a tank's coming towards you. And realistically, right there, I didn't really want to hit the E100 because he's only on 55 health. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll just load a hash round. We'll just hit him anywhere on the turret and we'll take him out in the game. And I think that's kind of a mechanic as well, whereby it kind of doesn't really promote you from actually, you know, using your intelligence to be able to aim at weak points and removing them entirely and as we get hit by artillery there we go you know the other kind of mechanic within the game that isn't so fun and i think that highlighting these to new players and just letting you know what it is actually like to play in this game is something i don't think very many people talk about they don't talk about um the mechanics that are going to be not very fun and by this video i'm not crapping on the game basically i'm not trying to say the game is terrible, it's awful, don't play the game, that's not in, uh, at all my intention but what I am doing is just highlighting uh, some of the aspects which may not be so fun so you kind of have to take those into consideration when you decide you're going to play a game like this and so yeah just highlighting what they are maybe just maybe Wargaming will do something about it but I very much doubt it although they do say that they're looking into artillery changes in the near future so maybe just maybe we'll actually see those in game but that's not a guarantee and with Wargaming you know nothing is a guarantee um, but I guess it will be interesting to see what they do with artillery hopefully they don't get actually buffed uh, somehow accidentally like they did with the um, E5 years ago they accidentally buffed it and made its cupola like ridiculous so you couldn't even pen the weak point of it but that's a, another video entirely um, but what we are doing now is just finishing up the last bit of damage and in games like this you know you've got 1050 alpha damage with your AP round then you have a mechanic whereby you can swap around uh, into your Hesh round which completely negates the whole point of having the two rounds and choosing when to to kind of swap between them and so these tanks got a massive buff uh, in my opinion when they swap to update 6.0 and that's just because you know I can now swap between whichever round I want and whichever round is best for the tank that I'm shooting against so yeah, there's just another mechanic within the game that I think you guys need to learn about. Of course, if you have the FV4005 and you're not using the advanced reload thing within the game, then yeah, I would promote it, to be honest. It is one of the key things that you want to have in a tank like this that has the ability to fire Hesh rounds and all of the variety of other rounds within the game. I believe we've got two more gameplays uh, that we'll get into in just a second featuring some kind of mechanics that I guess we need to talk about and maybe you want to use these to your advantage in World of Tanks console that's of course up to you do you think that they're overpowered or do you think that they're kind of balanced the way they are because yes some of the tanks are balanced but I think that they have broken aspects of them and that being the T92 right here now do I think that T92 HMC the tier 10 American artillery piece in World of Tanks is broken no, no, I don't think it's broken. Do I think it's overpowered? Do I think that it's going to win you a game single-handedly? Absolutely not. But do I think the ability to be able to one-shot someone from their in, their full health entirely where they can't do anything to you, is that balanced? Is it is the fact that you can spend 30 seconds, hit someone across the map that, yeah, they might have been aggressive, they might have been pushing, then your RNG says, yes, you can hit, you hit them, take 2,000 hit points of their health, and then they go back to the garage. Is that fair for the person you're playing against? Is it fair for you to have to just sit there and not really do very much except from, you know, hope that you hit the enemy tank? Is that fun? Not particularly in my kind of opinion. I've only really played artillery because I got fed up of the game. And when, I, when you're kind of in that fed up state and you don't really care and you're just playing with mates whilst they're, you know, grinding through tech trees or you know, you're playing just artillery just to just mess about whilst talking to your friends or whatever who play World of Tanks, then I guess it's kind of there. It's a casual thing, you know, you don't have to take too much uh, seriously within it. And that's certainly something I don't do, hence why I run so many AP rounds. And that's just because, you know, they're kind of the FU round. If you hit them, then it's fantastic and the opponent is FU'd. Uh, but if you miss, then you're FU'd, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, I think that that's kind of something that I've enjoyed. Is it balanced though? Absolutely not. I don't think the ability to be able to one-shot any tank within the game with any tank is at all balanced in my opinion. And so, yeah, that's kind of my thought process on artillery. Of course, I think limiting them to one or two artillery per game maximum 
within the game would kind of help with that situation whereby if multiple people pick them in a platoon which is another thing I think that you should only be able to actually have one artillery in a platoon because say if we take two T92s that are using the premium HE rounds with the high splash damage whereby they can miss you for up to 800 900 and even if they hit you but do not pen they can hit you for a thousand damage is that balanced absolutely not and then you get the other case look at this e50 on the move what are we going to do ap rounds there we go lovely thank you very much 1061 damage taken he had no ability to be able to shoot us back he did nothing wrong there really yes he went through the middle of the map yes he got spotted yes he couldn't get hit by any of our team which means that you know on the majority of occasions where artillery isn't actually looking at him then yeah he probably would have got away with it but there we go it's just another mechanic whereby yes our round where went where we needed it to and so yeah it's just a, a big problem for me in terms of artillery I just don't think that they're particularly very um, very balanced in my opinion anyway and of course you know that's coming from someone that's played thousands of games in artillery I'm not going to call myself an expert at artillery but certainly you know I've played enough to be able to at least hit shots for the majority of time and if I really want to have the best game I would not be firing AP rounds I would be firing only Hesh rounds I'd be looking at where the opponents are bunching up together and then I'd just be splashing them if you even if you can't hit them what you do is you just go for the splash damage and um, maybe I'll, I'll link a clip at the end of this whereby, yeah, you don't actually want to pen an opponent tank because it's actually better to get a non-penetrating hit and hit like four enemies all at once with an AP round, uh, with a Hesh round even, uh, and then you can get more damage. And I think, you know, if you're on the other end, this is the sort of thing that artillery players are doing within the game. You know, you can spend 30 seconds reloading where you're just munching on your own crisps or whatever you want to be doing. And then, you know, now I can just relax, faff about for however long I want to faff about for, and then decide maybe hmm, I should move, I should maybe react to the situation and then get myself into a good position of course it is down to the artillery player of course you're going to get terrible artillery players of course you're going to get better artillery players who know a little bit more about what they're doing uh, but for the most part you know the mechanic itself is kind of overpowered in the fact that you can one-shot opponent tanks i see people comment oh yeah but the, you don't always hit you don't always hit that's not my point my point is the fact that you can even one-shot a tank like this VKB that you'll see in a second, it's another game, we've got a premium HE round loaded here, and instead we decide to flick to the AP using that mechanic that we talked about, and bye bye did absolutely nothing wrong, 1595 or 96 damage taken from him, literally did nothing wrong, we've taken all his hit points, is that balanced? To be honest, I don't think so, but then again, I guess... It's coming from an opinion of, of one player and not the entire player base. I see a lot of people talking about it. I see a lot of people saying artillery is overpowered. So, yeah, I guess I'm not in the bandwagon where I buy. I think you should absolutely completely ruin artillery and just make it unplayable. But what I am saying is that definitely needs a rework to the alpha damage. I just don't think having this kind of high alpha damage is ever a good thing within the game. Yes, you saw this is the floor of artillery you can get one hit by pretty much every tank in the game especially if they load he rounds to take you out but we still one shot basically two tanks in that game from near enough full health yes of course the 50 had a little bit more than um or damage taken off of him and of course the vkb did as well but even if they didn't if they had all of their hit points we still with an ap round would have an alpha damage capable of taking away all of their hit points anyway so it doesn't really matter whether or not they were on full health or not because if we pen we're taking 18 15 minimum away from them and that just with me anyway is not okay 1800 alpha damage 2200 with the he and of course premium he definitely uh, kind of rolls high enough anyway now Enough of ratting about artillery and just ranting a little bit, I guess. Um, video isn't meant to be a rant. It's just basically talking about some of the things that you'll encounter when you play World of Tanks. And I guess here's another mechanic is autoloaders. Now, am I saying all autoloaders are overpowered? No, no, I don't think that all autoloaders are overpowered because we've got things like the auto reloading Italian heavy tanks within the game. But some autoloaders are just 
better than the others, or at least more capable in the majority of situations. And the Fosh 155 is definitely one that fits into that category. Do I think it's completely outrageous and you're going to have fantastic games every single time? No, but it does have the ability to take away 2,400 average hit points away from people in one clip. And it takes, what, 30 seconds maximum to be able to reload the Fosh 155 from zero to six shells. And then it takes you maybe another six seconds, I believe, to pump out all of your shells. Or I think it might even be eight seconds, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. But 38 seconds, 2,400 damage dealt to your opponents. And believe me, the intraclip reload on this thing allows you to retrack opponents that you're going to be firing at. So it's not even a case of like you dish out 400, then like three seconds later you hit them with another one after they've, you know, moved behind cover. Nope, this thing gets it out super, super quick. And especially if you've got your combat rations active, you're going to be able to pump out that damage even quicker because that boosts up your reload speed by 10%, I think it is. An additional 10%, don't forget. And yeah, I just I just don't like some of these mechanics within the game. The, yes, I don't think that autoloaders are necessarily super overpowered, but what you do see is when autoloaders are in the game, a lot more YOLOing goes on, a lot more of this... I'm just going to go in, I'm going to waste my clip on one person, focus them, ruin their game entirely and then have a terrible game myself because I literally just YOLO'd in for no reason into six or seven enemies to take out one enemy uh, or not even take them out in the majority of situations. I find a lot of people don't even manage to get that damage done anyway. So yeah, I think that that's, it's good to talk about these things. I don't think that, you know... Having these secrets out in the open, I think it's always good to talk about the sort of things you'll be facing when you play World of Tanks, and that this is definitely a couple of them. Uh, of course, we will carry on the series and talk about some of the other kind of key things within the game. Maybe we'll talk about some of the best things within the game, what uh, you can do to take advantage of the meta things within the game, and then maybe it will kind of allow you to kind of spot what kind of tanks you, you're going to actually like. And I guess even the gameplay, just showing you the kind of things you want to be looking for when you're playing in your, uh, in your game and the positions that these tanks tend to go in, and the kind of areas that you really don't want to be taking your tank into as we put in one shell into the M48. Unfortunately, we miss. We hit him with a second. We hit him with a third. Only track him. We hit this guy with a first. And then we hit him with a second. What's that? 1,539 damage done in, what, maybe eight seconds of the first shell going out. Yeah, I thought Wargaming thought that having tanks that can be able to take out other tanks in one clip were overpowered so i don't quite know what the fosh 155 is still doing in the game with a 2400 clip potential but i guess we'll roll with it i guess we'll have some fun with it and it is a tank that i think yes it's not particularly overpowered i don't think the armor works that well um i don't think that it's going to be super super competitive i think that you can use it very well but yeah, I don't think it's particularly overpowered in the traditional sense, but the mechanic on it, yet again, being able to just dish out damage this quickly and uh, putting out damage that, that many uh, to your opponents is just something I'm not particularly fond of, at least myself, and I think it's cool to talk about it. Of course, if you're interested in any of these tanks, you'll have to grind them through the tech trees. I'm just showcasing some of the free tanks, so you don't have to pay for any of these. And if you want to pick them up, I would highly recommend all of them. They're all absolutely fantastic tanks. Definitely the Fosh 155 is such a fun one to play. You know, when you catch a tier 10 heavy tank out in the open, then it really doesn't have much of a choice but to just take all of your hits um, within the game. And if you're loading your APCR rounds, you're definitely not bouncing off of them, dealing 320 uh, something millimeters of penetration, which means you can go through the front of E100's turrets. And trust me, this thing goes through the front of E100 turrets with ease. Now, these games aren't particularly great ones, and this is just showcasing what a bad game looks like in these tanks, uh, at least in my bad games anyway. But yeah, these are... Are just tanks that I'm kind of I'm not saying that they're overpowered but what I am saying is that the mechanics will catch you out if you're a new player and you don't know about them if you don't know about the whole auto loaders if you don't know about artillery and what kind of damage it can actually do to you I think you know learning about it seeing the ways in which it can actually deal damage to you and uh, yeah I think that that's important 
I definitely want to see your guys' opinions on these tanks, these mechanics. Do you want any nerfs? Do you want any changes? Would you want to see more of these tanks within the game to make them more competitive, or at least make um, each of them less competitive in their own right, if that makes sense? So that you know you're not got this whole one one tank is just super overpowered compared to the others because it has this mechanic. Would you want to see multiple tanks with it so that you can at least uh, choose to, between the ones that you want to pick? And right here. You see, Andre the Giant, he's moving up. What are we going to do? One into him. Then we're going to wait. Two into him. Then we're going to put well, three, but we miss, actually. So that's not our fault. Then we put four. There we go. And then, yeah, we didn't manage to pick up the last bit of damage. And I think our controller actually goes out of battery in a second. Um, so, yeah. But there we go, 2,920 damage. Only really fired at two opponents. Yeah, just... In my opinion, I just don't think that these tanks are absolutely fine in any way, shape or form. I think that definitely something needs to be done, at least to the alpha damage, to just stop the ability for one-shotting tanks. Because if you're a new player, you're coming up against an experienced player, maybe someone like myself in terms of the amount of battles I've played. And I know kind of the, the traditional spots where new players will cross or whatever. And if I'm in a tank that has the ability to one-shot them or at least... Um, if I know the ability to track them and then redo my damage in an autoloader and in that kind of way then they really don't have much chance of fighting back even if they are one of the best players in the game. If I'm in a Fosh 155 and they're crossing in a medium and I track them with a first shot or aiming for the track as well then I retrack them with the second shot after they've repaired it then they've got absolutely no chance of basically surviving the encounter at least unless they've got the hit points which you'd have to be in something like a Mao's or an E100 or something like a, uh, a Type 5 Heavy or something like that and then that's the only really way that you can survive an encounter with a tank like this and so yeah definitely think that these are kind of the lesser known or lesser talked about things within the game of course artillery is very well talked about on both PC and console world of tanks for PS4 Xbox One of course Xbox One being the original uh, console world of tanks and then they've obviously cross-platformed it now, so we've got a bigger player base all in one. I think that was a good change, and um, yeah, I definitely think the nerfing of the 1850 Alpha on the FV4005, which it used to be, was a good, good change, and I think that, that was actually perfect for the game balance. I don't think if you're a FV4005 driver you particularly liked it, because not only did the Alpha damage get nerfed, but also the Hesh penetration got nerfed, so... Yeah, you are now bouncing a lot more, or at least not penning with your Hesh rounds, and you're doing 400 less alpha damage. But that is a balancing factor. Definitely think it was needed uh, for the FE4005, if I'm being completely honest and unbiased towards the tank. Of course, I really, really did enjoy the tank before the nerf, but yeah, definitely a tank that I think deserved a nerf and I'd like to see the different changes with some of the other tanks in the game just so that you don't get these overpowered tanks within the tiers and there's certainly ones at the lower end of the scale whereby you've got some of the premium tanks Hellcat 105 for example and some of the other ones that can just basically one shot other tanks at the lower tiers which is probably more predominant for the newer player experience in World of Tanks and so yeah I guess I wanted to highlight that within this game uh, and, or in these games that I've just played and talk about it for you guys. Of course, let me know your opinions in the comment section down below and we can get a good discussion going. I really do enjoy these kind of videos where we talk about the kind of, not problems, but talk about some as aspects of the game, whether or not I think that they're balanced, talk about whether the, the positives and the negatives of having things like this, of course, they're really fun to play. I'm not going to uh, beat around the bush there. They These are so fun to play when you get into those scenarios where you can be blatantly overpowered, but they don't happen all of the time, and that's kind of where Wargaming, I guess, say that they're not that overpowered, and when they look at the statistics, they're no different to any other tank class and tank within the game, but yeah. I definitely think in the, some situations they're just not balanced at all and it's the kind of mechanic behind it that is the kind of way in which they're balanced, unbalanced. So you had things like the Waffle E100 in the past having that 3000 alpha damage in one clip which was enough to w w like one clip an entire tank at the, the same tier. And of course if you're at two tiers lower which of course plus two minus two is still going on 
then yeah it makes them even more overpowered because you don't even need the entire clip to clip them uh, all in one go so yeah that's my opinion hopefully i get your opinions in the comment section down below and of course if you did like the video then be sure to like it obviously if you didn't like it dislike it but please let me know why um, and of course if you want to check out some more content on the channel there'll be plenty of that there should be some on screen right now a big thank you to everyone that's watched this video and a big thank you to the channel members who've just given a little bit extra towards the channel and enable me to actually provide content like this for you guys um, and at least purchase some premium tanks within the game if I need to for new content and stuff like that thank you very much Hope you did enjoy, and if you want to check out more content, once again, have a look on screen right now. Other than that, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.